الله أكبر. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونشكر ونستعين ونستغفر ونتوب إليه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد محمد عبده ورسوله رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم everyone So as we heard from the previous speakers, the surah of Prophet Yusuf السلام, the story of the Prophet Yusuf السلام, is a story of moral fortitude. It's a story of leadership and humility. But it is also a story of family, a story of siblings, and a story of justice. And what we see in the journey of Yusuf alayhi salam are central figures within the family dynamic that impacted him, impacted his journey, his life, and where he alayhi salam found himself. Each and every one of us here knows what it's like to have a sibling, whether it is a biological sibling, a cousin that is like a sibling, or brothers and sisters around us who are meant to be like siblings. Each of us knows that within that love of sibling, within that relationship of being siblings, there is that which can be very sweet, a connection, a relationship where it is the two of you, or the three of you, the four of you, the twelve of you, building connections based on shared experiences based on being in close proximity to one another, based on sharing parentage. And those close experiences can draw one nearer to their siblings. But we also know that in those same experiences, we can find a rift. We can find that which is known as sibling rivalry. We can find injustices occurring between siblings. The very people that you may think are meant to be the closest to you. The very people that Allah Azza wa Jal places in your path as a blessing, as a mercy can also be the greatest test that you experience in this dunya. And this was the journey of Yusuf alayhi salam. And we see at the start of the surah that Yusuf alayhi salam speaks to his beloved father and as Ustad Majid mentioned, that connection with his father, that love, that excitement that Yusuf السلام, goes to his father telling him of the dream that he had, knowing that his father is one that he can trust, that his father will explain to him what it is that he experienced. And yet it is his father in his insight, in his wisdom, Ya'qub السلام, who recognizes and realizes that there may be jealousy erupting among the siblings. That the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, despite being brothers, despite being raised in the same home, that they may turn upon him because of these glad tidings, because of this risala from Allah azza wa jal, giving note of what will come to Yusuf alayhi salam. And so he warns his beloved son, he warns his beloved son and asks him not to share this vision even with his own brothers. And it's hard. It's hard when you have a sibling, a brother, a sister, an uncle, an aunt, a cousin, someone that you love dearly, someone that is a part of your family that you feel is a part of you. It is hard. To think that that person may not want khair for you, that that person may not want what's best for you. And yet shaitan is shatir. Shaitan knows how to seek that evil into our hearts and cause even the softest of hearts to harden towards one another. Siblings who played together as children, siblings who shared meals together, siblings who grew up together, turning against one another. And this is, this is a story as old as time itself. The very first murder that occurred in this dunya was between siblings, between the sons of Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam, the first prophet, the first human created on earth, 
raised his children in a way to love Allah, raised his children understanding and knowing la ilaha illallah. And yet this did not stop. This did not stop his son from killing his own brother from a place of jealousy, from a place of wanting that which his brother had, that which was decreed for his brother. And Yusuf alayhi salam, would experience the same in terms of this jealousy, in terms of this fire that burned inside the hearts of his brothers that would cause them to wish upon him harm. And his father knew. His father knew that this could be the case. And yet, despite his misgivings, despite his fear, Ya'qub alayhi salam, trusting fully in Allah, having that strength of tawakkul, sends Yusuf alayhi salam with his brothers and his brothers commit the deed of trying to harm Yusuf leaving him in the well thinking that he is dead that he has perished bringing back the shirt soaked in sheep's blood and crying to their father saying that he was no more and Yaqub alayhi salam with that heaviness of heart remained patient knowing that Allah is most just, knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal would provide him with relief and would allow him again at some point to reconnect with his beloved Yusuf alayhi salam. And this is not the only case of sibling rivalry, of jealousy, of harm within a family that causes brokenness, that tears people apart. This is not the only case that we see in the Quran this is not the only case in the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see Abu Lahab, who was the half-brother of Abdullah, the father of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and hence the half-uncle of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Lahab as the half-brother of the father of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also had hiqd, had hatred in his heart, also had jealousy in his heart, also had this maligning nature about him. And it was Abu Lahab who caused so much harm to befall the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Family members. The people that we often believe are the ones that are meant to have our backs. Family members, the ones that we look towards and we say, yes, this person will never leave me. And yet Allah Azza wa Jal will often use people, use people in our lives, place people in our lives to test our attachments. And it is sometimes the one that we place the most trust in when we place our trust in a human being, it is a trust that is misplaced. And so when we place the most trust in a sibling, when we place our hopes, our expectations in a family member, we are limiting ourselves in that our trust, our hope, our connections, our expectations are meant to be reserved to, uh, for our connection with Allah. And this is why we are so often disappointed. This does not mean that we treat our family members in ways in which we are suspicious, that we treat our family members in ways which we put harm upon them. Because this is not what happened in the case of Yusuf alayhi salam. We see that even when the opportunity arose, after Yusuf alayhi salam experienced trial after trial after trial, when the opportunity arose in which he could have harmed his siblings, he could have harmed his brothers, he could have sought revenge and put them in jail and punished them in his position as the minister of finance. He did not. He did not and he chose to forgive them. He did not live his life with bitterness because he knew that the justice of Allah was true. He knew that Allah was protecting him from that which could have been worse for him through these trials and tribulations. And every time Allah Azza wa Jal places in our path a person who is a test for us, whether it be a family member, a friend, a community member, a spouse, a child, Whenever Allah Azza wa Jal places that person as a test in our lives, He also places in our lives 
the one who is a relief, the one who is a blessing, the one who alleviates our pain and our fear. And we see this over and over again in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Despite being thrown in the well and being left for dead, we know that Allah Azza wa Jal sent to him the salvation. In what form? In the form of what we would assume to be enslavement. And yet when he was lifted up from the well and when he was sold through this process of enslavement, we know Al-Aziz was kind. Al-Aziz was gentle towards him. Al-Aziz cared for him. Al-Aziz raised him and taught him all he knew. And yet again, despite having, just as in his home, Yusuf السلام, had the blessing of his father and the test of his brothers. In the home of Al-Aziz, he had the blessing of Al-Aziz and the test of the wife of Al-Aziz, Zulaikha. And that was a difficult test which he faced with the wife of Al-Aziz. And yet again, despite the difficulty and the test that he is faced in, he recognizes that Allah is protecting him from that which could be worse. And he chooses that imprisonment because he views being in prison as being better for him than being in that pathway of fitna. And in that prison, we see that he engages with those who speak to him of their dreams and Yusuf alayhi salam through the gift that Allah azza wa jal bestows upon him is able to tell them what these dreams mean. And when they leave the prison, he asks to be remembered to their king. And yet human beings are forgetful. We know that the insan, at the root of it is nisyan, that we forget. And so the man that he asked to remember him to the king, he forgets. And for years and years, Yusuf alayhi salam remains imprisoned. And yet again, this prison is a blessing to him because Allah azza wa jal is preparing for him that which is better. And we see the journey of Yusuf alayhi salam, despite the brothers who tried to hold him down, to ruin his pathway. We see that at every step Allah Azza wa Jal provided that which was better. And so when we suffer in our relationships, when we struggle maybe with our own siblings, when we struggle maybe with our own parents, when we struggle with our children, when we struggle in the dynamics of family which is so often imperfect, when we struggle in those moments and we recognize the brokenness, we also have to look for that which is not broken. We also have to see that which Allah has blessed us with, whether in the form of a person, in the form of rizq that is given to us in a way to soothe and to heal and to uplift us despite our difficulty. And each and every one of us has this. Despite the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam struggling at the hands of Abu Lahab, struggling at the hands of Abu Jahl, struggling at the hands of Quraysh, Allah azza wa jal replaced for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those people who did not wish him well, replaced them with the Sahaba, replaced them with righteous spouses, replaced them with those who would uplift the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Quran is filled with these narrations that guide us to better understand the role of family, the impact of family, and in particular, our siblings. And we see that there are siblings mentioned in the Qur'an that are truly those who uplift and those who stand beside one. The Prophet Musa alayhi salam, in Surah Taha, we are reminded that after he turns to Allah, reciting the dua of Musa, the dua that today we recite before we face any challenge. When Musa alayhi salam recites the dua asking Allah to grant him ease in the difficult task ahead of him of speaking to Fir'aun. After reciting this dua, he asks Allah to grant him a wazir, to grant him someone that will be with him. And he requests that this person be his brother Harun. Because in this sibling relationship, in this dynamic, Musa alayhi salam knew that Harun, who would also become a prophet, was the one that would have his back, 
was the one that would stand beside him despite being raised in a home and where his adoptive father Fir'aun was the greatest test that he could face and yet he was blessed he was blessed with Asiya whose kind heart kept him as a child as an adopted child in the home and he was blessed with Harun his brother and we see examples of brothers and sisters who do uplift and again Musa alayhi salam it was his own sister who was the one who suggested that his mother be the wet nurse in the home of Fir'aun and so it was his sister who was the one who was able to be the mediator or the one that brought the mother of Musa alayhi salam back to her son Allah Azza wa Jal gives us these examples in the Quran he gives us these examples to remind us not just as stories not just something that we should memorize and, and, and move on in our lives the Quran is meant to be our guide our guide in terms of our connection with Allah but also our guide in terms of our connection with others and one of the first things that we want to keep in mind in terms of our relationships with others including our own family members is understanding the importance of zuhd the importance of detaching not in a way that we ever cause harm not in a way where we cut ties because as much as we are commanded to practice zuhd we are also commanded to maintain silat al-rahim the thread or the thread connection of the womb and we are commanded to maintain this thread because these relationships are important even when there is difficulty even when like Yusuf alayhi salam harm is wrought by those who we think are closest to us this idea of toxic relationships and cancel culture we need to understand how Allah Azza wa Jal guides us towards this zuhd this detachment but also maintaining the silat al-rahim and it means that never do we utter a word of harm towards those that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us again as both a blessing and a test never do we cut ties with them but we also recognize and understand the importance of protection just as Yusuf alayhi salam hesitated to send bin Yameen the youngest child the one who was the full biological brother of Yusuf he hesitated to send bin Yameen with the older brothers back to Egypt and he hesitated because of what had happened to Yusuf alayhi salam and so we protect ourselves but we don't cut ties we recognize and understand that our siblings our family members may truly be the greatest of blessings like the sister of Musa alayhi salam Harun the brother of Musa alayhi salam but we also know that our family members can be our greatest test at times and we see this consistently and it is from the mercy of Allah that we are blessed with both we are blessed with seeing the connection and the closeness that our siblings can provide to us but we are also blessed in other ways and recognizing that the tests exist if you have ever struggled in a relationship in your family maybe you have struggled in your relationship with your brother or with your sister maybe you have struggled in your relationship with your parents maybe you have struggled in your relationship with your cousins or your aunts or your uncles know that you are not alone know that Allah Azza wa Jal gives us these revelations in the Quran because he knows he knows our pain just as he knew the pain of the father of Yusuf alayhi salam just as he understood the pain of Yaqub alayhi salam as he turned to Allah and said that his shakwa his complaint was only for Allah but just as we said that the story of Yusuf is a story of moral fortitude a story of leadership and humility a story of family and particularly siblings we also know that it is a story of justice and the justice that Allah Azza wa Jal promises us is a justice in this dunya and in akhirah it is a justice that Allah can only give and Allah can only foresee for Allah is al-hakam al-adl he is the most just of all judges 
And just as we see that Yusuf alayhi salam experienced justice in his lifetime, despite the trials and the tribulations, despite the years of imprisonment, the years of enslavement, Yusuf alayhi salam lived to see that justice, Yaqub alayhi salam experienced that justice, and that justice was not one of revenge, it was not one of bitterness, it was not one of hatred, it was a justice that was rooted in that love for Allah. And so as we see our siblings slaughtered in Gaza, as we see our brothers and sisters who may not be biologically related to us, but are our brothers and sisters in Islam, as we see our siblings massacred, we must know that Allah's justice will come. And it may take years of imprisonment. It may take years of difficulty, years of trials, years of false accusation, years of enslavement. But Allah is Al-Hakam Al-Adl. And just as Yusuf alayhi salam journeyed through the most difficult of circumstances with his own siblings in his own family, and in the end, Allah's justice was served, we too know that in every corner of the world, whether it is in Sudan, whether it is in Gaza, whether it is in anywhere that we are seeing injustice occur, we know that Allah's justice will be delivered. And we pray that Allah's justice is delivered in our lifetime, but we remain confident and we strengthen our tawakkul, knowing that that justice will come, whether in our lifetime or not. Jazakumullah khair.